Hey guys, Shabbat Shalom. I hope everybody had a great day today. Uh, I just want to give you a really quick uh, what God put on my heart to share with you guys today. Um, anyone who will listen, doesn't matter. Uh, but I had an amazing service today at Beth Yeshua International um, in Macon, Georgia. Uh, brother came from Minnesota and I wanted to spend some more time with him. It wasn't going to happen just because of bad planning. Uh, but I, I'm so thankful to God that... Um, you know, for family and for people that just love God and love each other. That's really, it's really simple. And if anything I got out of Rabbi Greg's message today is that we're supposed to keep it simple, okay? Um, and why do I say that? Because sometimes we can take worldly phrases and, and turn them into something that's, you know, not godly, right? We'd say something about scripture um, and it's not really what God's saying. But this hit me in the heart today. We, we, we spent a lot of time studying. We spent a lot of time reading to understand God's Word, and that's absolutely right to do. I really think that's 100% right to do, to really dig into the Word, to seek His face, to do what He's called you to do. Um, and, you know, that's it's really important. So, you know, anyway, um, but I wanted to share this with you because I think if, if we are truly being transformed by the power of the Word, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, then we are going to um, not look like the world. We're going to be something different. Like, not, because a lot happen. what happens is in the body, a lot of people, um, they, they come across like they're holy or righteous. And it's not really the way it's meant to be. It's not really the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be genuinely loving souls, right? And to me, Yeshua was the primary, he said, it's all about the kingdom of God, all about the kingdom of the Father. So, if we are being transformed into that image, meaning obedient children of the Most High, then why is that so hard? We're supposed to be like children in our faith. This is what hit me. And, and Rabbi Greg says today, he says, um, he said, keep it simple, right? And, you know, everybody knows that saying, but he said, um, he said, Yeshua had three prayers in, in, that are recorded in Scripture. Two of them were very simple, like Thanksgiving, right? And he said, not much to glean from. And then we had John 17, where it was just powerful. It's about the unity, right, between he and the Father, and that we have eternal life through them, and that we are seeking his glory and his kingdom, but that we would follow the shepherd, okay? We would be one. We'd have this unity that people would see and go, make it known, right? Make his name known. So a lot of a lot of denominations destroyed that. They've separated um, so much that there's no real recognizable love. And you will find it in just about every one of them, but you don't see it all the time. So what I wanted to share with you is what when when I read this this afternoon, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of time because of other things that are happening. Not it's not a normal Shabbat for me. But when I read, I said Matthew 11. I went back and read it, and I was like, boom, I get it. So. Here's what I'll read, and then I'm just going to very quickly share, and then I'm going to be out of here. So here's what he says in, in Matthew 11, um, just for a little context. You know, Yeshua went through a ton of uh, hatred by the religious communities, okay? They were very angry at him because he was turning the system upside down and, and shaking it, and it, it messed people up. So here's what Yeshua says. He says, um, before I say that, he... He's, this is what he's saying to, to the people of God. Um, he says, oh, what can I compare this generation? This is Matthew eleven sixteen. 16. What can I compare this generation with? They're like children sitting in the marketplaces calling out to each other. We made happy music, but you wouldn't dance. We made sad music, but you wouldn't cry. That's like the condition of the body today. Most people are, are lukewarm and they're just sort of coasting through life, right? They're just coasting through they go to church or they do like some of these things, but they're not they're not empowered, okay? And God's like, I'm saying, hey, we're playing happy music. You're not dancing. You're sort of just like whatever. Or sad music. You're not crying. That's what he says. For Yochanan came fasting and not drinking, right? So they said he has a demon. This is the accusations that you will get when you become a believer. The Son of Man came. Now he's talking about himself. Eating and drinking wine. So much for that theology that you can't drink as a, a Christian, right? Son of Man came eating and drinking drinking wine. So they say, aha. Listen, they say, aha. They jeer at you. A glutton and a drunkard. A friend of tax collectors and sinners. He says, well, the proof of wisdom is in the actions that it produces. 
he goes on and says, Then Yeshua began to denounce the towns in which he had done most of the miracles, because the people had not turned from their sins to God. Okay, so just stop there for a second before he goes into the woes. So many things that happen that Yeshua is doing, God is doing miraculously, okay? People are like are seeing people healed, right? And maybe not so much now because we don't our faith is so weak. We don't have the true like first century faith where we saw all these miracles, right? But when he came, it was no doubt he was doing miracles. And he says, I do them in the name of my father. Like I'm coming to do these things, right? Yet people just continue on their life. They don't really change. Remember, ten lepers were healed, only one came back to thank God. Only one. I'm not saying only ten percent, but we know that there's four grounds and only one of them bears fruit from Matthew 13. But he's not even there yet. We're not in Matthew 13 yet. So maybe that parable is not applicable to this time and these people. But we know because we have the whole counsel of God's word. But listen to what he's saying. He's saying they began to denounce, uh, he began to denounce them because all these things, people would not turn to God from their, to God from their sins. It's like sin is so gripping. This is why we try to warn young people, guard your heart. Don't get into sin because once it grabs you, it's incredibly difficult. You need to be delivered from them. You need remission of your sins. You need to be delivered from the power of the enemy. And the way that that happens, it's supernatural. Only God can give you the power to overcome sin. That It's, it's not just saying a prayer to get eternal life. It's to, it's to be removed from the old nature that desires to be in lust and, and greed and immorality is to be transformed. That's why it says a transformation, you know, uh, teshuva, which is to turn, you know, turn away from sin, to abhor the sin, to hate it. It's vile, right, to God. So continuing on, Yeshua says, woe to the Chorazin, which is a place in Israel. It's actually desolate now. There's like an old synagogue uh, restored there. Not like a real one, but like like the remnants of it. And then he says, uh, to you, Bethsaida, right? Bethesda. Why? It says, why if the miracles done in you had been done in Zor and Zida? Now, those are two places where it was like horrific, right? Lots of sin. Everyone knew it. It says, they would long ago have put on sackcloth and, sackcloth and ashes as evidence that they've changed their ways. Um, I won't go into it now, but there's a lot of scripture that talks about putting on sackcloth and ashes. It's like recognizing what you are so that God sees from your heart. You can do that and in, in, in cover it, right? But in your heart, you have this like intense desire to to show like, I, I'm, I'm a sinner, right? Beat your chest. I'm a sinner in need of your mercy, God. Have mercy on me. You know, it's a plead. It's a cry. It's legitimate, okay? It's not crying because things are bad that are happening to you because you want to go back to your old ways. It's a desperate cry that the God of heaven will hear and he will outstretch his arm. He, it's, it's available. His hand is out and he's ready to take you out of it. This is the thing we need to be sharing with people. Problem is a lot of people are, are thinking that they're good because they're not in some obvious sin, but they have something going on inside their hearts, inside their inner, inner self that is an idol idolatry that wants that keeps them in sin keeps gripping them okay but here's here's the here's what i was trying to get to and i i know i can go long but i just want to set the tone for what what really i believe that i learned today over again that i think we should always be learning because if we're feeding off of the the words of the creator then we have soul food that will nourish us equip us so that we can go do the works that that yeshua did to heal the sick to feed the poor Right, to lead them to the true salvation. Exactly. His outstretched arm is Yeshua. His name Yeshua means salvation, God's salvation. So that's why his name is so important. Um, that's another teaching, but but thank you, sister. So he says, um, but I tell you that it'll be more tolerable in Zor and Zion than for you on the day of judgment. See, nobody wants to talk about the day of judgment because it's hard to think about people will be destroyed in eternity, right? We all want heaven, but do we want the creator? Do we want the one that can, that do we want him? Or do we want the stuff that he gives us? That's a test. He's testing all of us to see, are we really going to, you know, want him or the stuff that he's provided? Okay. So, but here's what he says. As for you, Kafarnachum, which is uh, Capernaum in some Bibles, but he's, it's Kafarnachum. That's where Yeshua taught. That's where his, his synagogue was. Um, and he taught from there. 
you know, it's in, in the Galilee or near the Galilee. He says, will, will you be exalted to heaven? It's a question. No, you will be brought down to Sheol. He's talking about Kafarnachum, like the village of comfort. Like people rejected him in the towns that he was. And that's from Isaiah 14, 13, and 15, that quote. So don't throw out the, the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Don't throw it out because Yeshua quoted it many times. Paul quoted it many times. Peter quoted it many times. John quoted it many times. I'm telling you, don't throw it out. For It says, for if the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, now we all know where Sodom and Gomorrah is, right? At least in the Bible. It would have been in existence today. So what he's trying to conv convince us to is, is that, I'll read the last verse. It says, but I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more bearable for the land of Sodom than for you. So that's a strong statement. If if you really have pride and you have uh, things that you're holding on to and sin, when somebody confronts you in that sin, especially if it's the son, he's saying it's going to be more tolerable for those people that you think are sick and twisted. Because if, if they had the miracles that have been done for you, you, you would be free. And they would have had, they wouldn't have been judged. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah is... Um, evidence of dust and ashes. And when you put the dust and ashes on, you're you're identifying with destruction. Like, this is where I belong, but for my cry for your mercy. So so just think about that. And also when he says you wipe off the dust off your feet when they don't receive you, he, you're signifying dust and ashes to them. Okay? You're basically saying you're going to be in dust and ashes because you're not receiving the truth. Okay? Um, and, and then, you know, Peter uses it about... The end days in Second Peter uh, two and three talks about Lot, Lot, and he talks about Sodom and how it's going to like the, this day, this generation. The problem is, is we are like Sodom. Now Sodom and Gomorrah, people go, oh, that's sodomy, that's that's sexual morality. Yes and no. That was a symptom of the deeper rooted issue. Ezekiel sixteen forty nine and fifty says that pride and arrogance, that is the root of that disgusting fruit that comes from um, the lack of morality in our society. You can't make someone uh, live a moral life if they still have pride, right? They might be able to fake it, but really the depth of the root is pride and arrogance. You don't care for the poor. You don't care for the needy. You're, you're really crying out to God so you can continue to have your stuff, okay? Sounds like a tough message, but it's just the truth. Now, here's, here's what I really wanted to say to you guys, <laughs> because now we're going to get into... Um, Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, which is Yeshua's prayer that Rabbi Greg was talking about this morning, okay? Matthew eleven twenty five. 25, it says, It was at that time Yeshua said, now listen what Yeshua says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven, right? That's how we should always address him, Father, Lord of heaven, right? It says, Lord of heaven and earth, and you concealed these things from the sophisticated and educated and revealed them to ordinary folks, simple people. Yes, Father, I thank you that it pleased you to do this. Okay, so keep it simple, okay? You don't have to be a rocket scientist, college educated, um, a full-grown adult. You know, the world wants you to think that you are really not a man until you're 18 or 21. The truth is, you, if you're a child at, after the age of five, or even the age of accountability at 12, I think it is, or 13, where you would have a bar mitzvah as a, uh, a Jewish boy, you are accountable to God for your actions, okay? You might have had a covering. You might still have a covering till the age of accountability, I believe is 20, based on my ref my how I see scripture. But, but, you're not a child. If you can understand what I'm saying, Yeshua is saying, you got to be like a child to enter into the kingdom. Look at, we have to have a childlike faith again. We have to have a pure love and sincerity of heart because those who are pure at heart are going to see the kingdom. How do you get a pure heart? I was reading it this morning, I think in Psalm, what was it, 24? Um, I just remember, I didn't even think of that until right now, but I think, let me share that with you. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Anyway. Um, um, okay. Psalm 24, 4. 2, 4, 4. 24, 4. Those with clean hands and pure hearts who don't make vanities the purpose of their lives or swear oath just to deceive. Like, you can break that down, go through the study of those words, and you'll see the simplicity of a pure heart is just that like you trust God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, everything. That if he says go, you go. If he says stay, you stay. Now you gotta listen because it's a still small voice. But you don't have to be some, you know, 
major guy. Like, I actually worry about people who put their trust in, like, the big-time preachers or whatever. Like, no. You know, even even Rabbi Greg says, don't, like, follow God. Don't follow, you know, listen to me. He's got a powerful anointing, and that's a beautiful thing. But follow the one that gave him the anointing. Follow the one that if God used a person to lead you to the true Messiah, the true path, the true life, the way, the truth, and the life. You know, you will have peace and you'll have the power to overcome sin and you'll be preparing for the end and right now simplicity is is the best because if we just say listen i trust you god trust him with all your heart listen to him if he says stop doing something stop doing it. if he says do something start doing it see it's basic right it's why i said you have to be like a child because children at the young age they rebel but god is like a he's a good father he disciplines who, those who he loves he puts him to the test a little bit, right? If you guys know what I'm talking about. And then he gives you this power. Where does it come from? I don't know. He says the wind blows to and from. No one knows where it goes, right? It's faith and it's not blind, okay? It's it's pure and it's beautiful. Trust and obey. God says do it, do it. It's very basic. But Yeshua even prayed and said, thank you, Father, for for not giving this to the people who are educated, Right? So you don't have to know so much to be a true believer. In fact, it's probably better you don't. And the more you know, the more responsibility you have. But you have to be equipped by God through his word in order to do the things that he's, that he's called you to do. And people try to get equipped and they're not called. And that's a disaster because they think they got to do big things, right? Bad move. Okay, Or you could bury your talents. God's given you. To go do something that you're afraid to do because you're just not trusting. You're not. You don't know. You're. I'm not. I can't do that. Even though you know better. See, the simplicity of heart is exactly what he's looking for. So anyway, that's all I had to share with you. I pray that the Lord is blessing you today. This is a beautiful day, even though it's about the storm. I think it's just a gorgeous day, just to remember how awesome our God is. Okay. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your brothers. Love your brothers and sisters. You know, if you love God, you're gonna love what He loves, which He loves people. Yeah, they're not. They might not be saved yet. They might not have be. They might not be anything yet, right? But how are they supposed to know? We have to have legitimate unity in the body of Messiah, so that people will know who our Father is, who our Lord Yeshua is. Because, look, we're supposed to be witnesses. You know, go out and share the truth with people, so that they will know who their God is, who He is, and it's coming to a close. You know. That we're distracted. So I'm hoping that anyone who listens to this will realize, don't be distracted. Keep it simple. Be in the moment. Be with people that are like-minded in your community, but also don't be afraid to go share with someone who doesn't know yet. They need legitimate love. So anyway, when I hold up a sign today, I'm, I was doing it out of obedience because sometimes people hold up a sign, hey, John from New York or whatever. I was like, show the heart. We love you. You're our family. God bless you guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your night. And uh, I pray God's blessings over you and your families right now, that he equips you, protects you, strengthens you, and prepares you for what's coming. We need his grace. Without that grace, we're not going to make it. So keep praying. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. I love you. Shalom.